There are three types of sneakers within this culture. Number one, the comfortable sneaker. The type of shoe that you're gonna wear out and about, whether it's running, hiking, or maybe you just have to stand for an extended period of time. The one that you're going to get the most use out of. Number two, the most hype sneaker. Not always the most fashionable, but it's the type of shoe that a lot of sneaker heads are gonna want within their collection, whether it's to wear or to keep on ice. What a lot of people use is a subtle flex. Not all the time, only sometimes. But then you have what I like to call the WTSS. And you might be wondering, Corey, what does WTSS stand for? It's the what the sh sneaker. It kind of makes you wonder what was the company or manufacturer even thinking when they made these sneakers. And that, my friends, is what we're unboxing today. I made a huge mistake whenever I got these sneakers. It's a little bit more awkward for me because I'm standing up. Bing. The reason it's bad for me is because I got two of them. Yes, Corey got two pairs of a sneaker that is weird. Yeah, the Yeezy Boost 380 in the pepper colorway. I know that a lot of people don't like this sneaker. I know a lot of people think this sneaker is weird, but it's kind of one of these type of shoes that I don't know exactly what Adidas was doing as far as the style. I'm not a huge fan of sock liner sneakers myself. With a sock liner sneaker, I feel like there's really only one way you can wear your socks whenever you try to pair these with different outfits. It's low socks or even just no-show socks in general. You can't wear any high socks really with a sock liner sneaker or people just won't wear socks at all. I'm not knocking too much on Adidas because they're trying to innovate and they're trying to create different styles and things that a lot of different companies are going to piggyback off of. Is this something that Nike or Puma or whatever is going to actually piggyback off of? I, I, I don't know. This time we are set to see even further releases for the newly crafted Yeezy Boost 380. And we started with this non-reflective pair, Pepper Colorway. Much like the 350 V2's many two-part standouts, the colorway effectively uses the same base, provides the option for reflective threads, which I can't seem to ever get the reflective pair. These accents are seemingly embedded into the entire weave, calling more attention to the knit's gray detailing instead of the brown that dresses adjacent on the sneaker. For the non-reflective variant, which is what I have in my collection, everything is essential the same and emerges with a neutral look on its signature construction that we all know and sometimes love and sometimes hate. I don't know this exact tread pattern, so guys help me out in the comments down below. I like how they added this kind of pull tab that you can see right there to kind of just tighten your sneaker instead of just having the laces lay out. I'm sure you can adjust these or pull this out if you want to because it just seems to be a rubber piece. Whenever they come out with releases, is they have a standard picture, I guess you would say. It almost looks like a drawing. And that kind of gives you a different gauge on how the colors are gonna look and how they're gonna stand out. These look different than what I remember in the pictures. I feel like too that even whenever you go on different websites, third-party resellers like Goat and Stock X, that those colors look different as well. Kind of feels like a crapshoot, maybe feels inconsistent, maybe I'm just nitpicking a little bit. But let me know in the comments down below your opinion on these sneakers, if you would rock them, if you actually copped them yourself, if anybody wants to buy one of these pairs I will sell them to your retail price I promise as I say in every video please make sure to love life love God and love each other God bless to everyone out there I hope everyone has a great weekend stay safe peace